Hey guys, uh, I'm Ethan Moore from Stock and Fly here with Jacob um, from True Track down in Ohio. So Jacob, your system does not come with a saw. When we are buying a saw, whether we're using it as a track saw or any saw, what should we look for? Okay. So that's one of the more common questions we get since it is a universal system. So when you're picking a saw, whether to use it on a track saw or just to use it freehand with what you do, there's a couple things you want to look at, okay? The first thing is you want to make sure that whatever this piece here is, right? This is how you set your depth of cut. Most of them are stamped steel, some of them are not, but you want to make sure there's no flex in this piece right here because if there is and you can do this to the base of your saw anytime you change the height of your saw you're going to change where your blade goes so what it's doing there flexing is not good that's bad that's bad that's bad that's very bad right because there's no support here so okay. you're relying on the front part of the saw to basically hold everything true gotcha okay so this is a bad example if you want to look at a good example we've got this one over here you want something much heavier, right? So it's got a much heavier pivot point here. This is all cast through here. This is the difference between a battery powered saw and a corded saw right. that's meant for contractors and heavy use. Gotcha. Okay? So that's the number one thing. You wanna make sure there's no side to side blade. Gotcha. Okay? Second thing is, you wanna make sure that whenever you are using it, the blade itself does not come in and out of the arbor, right? It's called arbor drift, and you want to make sure that it doesn't exist. Right. Right? If you're using it freehand, it's going to be really hard to tell if you've got it, but if you throw it on a track system, it's going to become very apparent because your blade's going to drift in and out as you follow the grains. So just the lower quality saws just aren't made with enough... Um, yeah, usually, made, usually close enough tolerance is that. Yeah, yeah. Usually your lower your lower price saws are going to have bushings rather right. than bearings. Gotcha. And they're not going to hold true. Gotcha. Right? So that's the big thing. Make sure it doesn't flex and make sure your blades can stay true. And then just pick a nice quality blade. It doesn't have to be fancy. Our suggestion is always a 40 tooth, right? Just to get a thin kerf, 40 tooth. It's a nice middle of the road blade. You can do plywood and you're not gonna leave big chips. And you can also do solid lumber without it gumming up in the teeth. Gotcha. Okay. Is there any concern about the actual base of the saw or that's not usually too much of a problem? It's usually not much of a problem. If you're gonna adapt it to a track saw, what you wanna look for is try to find one that doesn't have this honeycomb structure. Okay. Right, because then you've gotta be real picky about where you put your bolts, gotcha. right? If you find one that's a lot flatter, it's a lot easier to find where you can put the bolts at on the flat one. Gotcha. Well, again, thank you very much, Jacob. Uh, if welcome. anyone else has any questions, you can email us at info at stockandsupply.com or comment on the video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.